Good day, grade 10. Since we already revisited the properties of gases, we can now talk about the gas laws. I am Mrs. Karen Rose Baez and I am going to present to you the presentation prepared by Mrs. Minerva M. Ramos. But before we proceed with the discussion, I'd like to greet Miss Dion Moira Rosima of 10 Generosity. Hello, Dion! Here are the learning objectives. At the end of the discussion, participants are expected to explain the relationship among volume, temperature, pressure, and number of moles for gases. Perform calculations involving the relationship among volume, temperature, pressure, and the number of moles for gases. And cite practical applications of the gas laws in our daily life. Gas laws are examples of scientific laws. Scientific laws are statements that describe, summarize, and predict some aspects in nature. Scientific laws are strongly supported by empirical evidences which are repeatedly verified with no contradicting observations, can be mathematically formulated in one or several statements or equations, are constant because they summarize what have been observed. Laws are different from theories. According to American Association for the Advancement in Science, a scientific theory is a well-substantiated explanation of some aspects of the natural world based on a body of facts that been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experiment. Scientific theory may alter or evolve if new evidences are discovered. Let us now find out how the different gas laws were derived from the behavior of gases. And let's start with the Boyle's Law. Why is it called Boyle's Law? Who formulated it? What are the properties of gases associated with this law? Anglo-Irish chemist Robert Boyle was able to investigate the relationship between pressure and volume of a gas using a J-shaped tube apparatus, which is close on one end. In his experiment, he trapped air in the tube with liquid mercury. He measured the volume of the trapped air and the difference in the heights of the mercury columns in two arms of the tube. As he poured successive amounts of mercury into the open end of the tube, he found that the volume of the trapped air decreases. His findings showed that whenever another amount of mercury is added to the J-shaped tube apparatus, a new volume and new pressure from the trapped gas is measured. In his observation, he expressed the volume readings in cubic inches and the pressure in inches of mercury. He then proposed Boyle's Law, which states that the volume of a given mass of a gas held at constant temperature is inversely proportional to its pressure. For a given sample of gas under two different conditions at a constant temperature, the product of pressure and volume is constant. Thus, it can be written as follows. P sub 1 times V sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2, where P sub 1 is the original pressure, V sub 1 is the original volume, P sub 2 is the new pressure, and V sub 2 is the new volume. Since P sub 1 times V sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2, we can derive the following formula. When getting the initial volume, we have V sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2 all over P sub 1. In getting the final volume, we have V sub 2 is equal to P sub 1 times V sub 1 all over P sub 2. In getting the initial pressure, we have the formula P sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2 all over V sub 1. And in getting the final pressure, we have the formula P sub 2 is equal to P sub 1 times V sub 1 all over V sub 2. Now this is a volume pressure curve plotted from the results of Boyle's experiment. 
This shows the relationship between the pressure and the volume using a numerical data. In Boyle's experiment, it only shows that as the volume decreases, the pressure increases, which pertains to an inverse relationship. Now let's take a look at this picture. Notice that the temperature is constant. They are all 298 Kelvin. Now take a look at the volume. In container number 1, it has a volume of 1 liter. Container number 2 has a volume of 0 0.5 liter. And container number 3 has a volume of 0 0.25 liter. Comparing it with the pressure, we may notice that as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. For example, the container number 1, which has a volume of 1 liter, has a pressure of 1 atmosphere. Container number 2 with 0 0.5 liter has a pressure of 2 atmosphere. And container number 3 with a volume of 0 0.25 liter has 4 atmosphere. So this is the explanation of Boyle's experiment that shows the inverse relationship between the volume and the pressure. The kinetic molecular theory explains the inverse relationship between pressure and volume. If the same amount of gas at the same temperature is confined in a smaller volume, the gas molecules become crowded and collide more frequently against the wall of the containing vessel, causing an increase in pressure. Gas molecules are constantly moving in all directions, thereby creating impact on the sides of the container. The impact force per unit area is the pressure. Meaning to say that if the pressure in the container is doubled, the volume of a gas decreases by one half, resulting to more collisions between gas molecules. Now that we already know the principles of Boyle's Law, we can now proceed with the practice exercises. So there are sample problems here that we are going to solve. For sample problem number one, a cylinder contains gas at 5.25 atmosphere pressure. When the gas is allowed to expand to a final volume of 12.5 liters, the pressure drops to 1.85 atmosphere. What was the original volume of gas in milliliters? So these are the given. P sub 1 is equal to 5.25 atmosphere. V sub 2 is equal to 12.5 liters. P sub 2 is equal to 1.85 atmosphere. And we are looking for the initial volume. Since P sub 1 times V sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2. Therefore, to find the initial volume of the gas, we use the formula V sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2 all over P sub 1. Because we are looking for the initial volume, we are going to use the formula V sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2 all over P sub 1. So this is equal to 1.85 atmosphere times 12.5 liters all over 5.25 atmosphere. So we're going to cancel the unit atmosphere. And we're going to multiply 1.85 to 12.25. And then after that, we'll, we're going to divide the answer by 5.25. And the answer is 4.40 liters. That is the initial volume. But since we're looking for the um, volume in milliliters, we're going to convert 4.40 liters to milliliters. And to convert, we have 4.40 liters 
times 1,000 milliliters over 1 liter. And we are going to cancel the liter, the unit liter, and multiply 4.40 by 1,000. And that is 4,400 milliliters. So the initial volume is equal to 4,400 milliliters. Sample problem number two. If I have 5.6 liters of gas in a piston at a pressure of 1.5 atmosphere and compress the gas until its volume is 4.8 liters, what will the new pressure inside the piston be? So these are the given. P sub 1 is equal to 1.5 atmosphere. V sub 1 is equal to 5.6 liters. V sub 2 is equal to 4.8 liters. And we are looking for the final pressure. Since we're looking for the final pressure, we're going to use the formula P sub 2 is equal to P sub 1 times V sub 1 all over V sub 2. And this is equal to 1.5 atmosphere times 5.6 liters all over 4.8 Liter. So we're going to cancel the unit liter, multiply 1.5 to 5.6 and divided by 4.8. So the answer is 1.8 atmosphere. So our final pressure is 1.8 atmosphere. Now that we already solved for the volume and the pressure, we can now proceed to the practice exercises. Why don't you get a piece of paper and a pen and answer the following? A copy of this presentation will be sent to your FB page or Schoology account. So you're going to answer the following and take a picture of it and send it to your science teacher. Boyle's Law explains the following phenomena or applications. The bubbles exhaled by the scuba diver increase in size as he or she approaches the surface of the ocean. The pressure exerted by the weight of water on the bubble decreases as one goes up the surface. Hence, the size of the bubbles increases. Deep sea fishes die when brought to the surface. The pressure decreases, thereby causing the volume of gases in their bodies to increase in size. This causes the membranes of their bladders and cells to pop. An inflated balloon bursts if squeezed too hard. Squeezing reduces the volume of the balloon, thus creating the pressure. If the balloon cannot withstand the pressure, it bursts. Syringe is used in drawing blood sample or giving injection. If the plunger of the syringe is pulled back, the volume of the syringe is increased and the pressure inside is decreased. To balance the effect of low pressure, air or blood is sucked in through the needle. This equalizes the pressure inside and outside the syringe. Ears pop at high altitude. Most of the time, you feel pain in your ear while in an ascending or descending plane. In these situations, there is pressure imbalance inside and outside your ear that strains the eardrum. To relieve the discomfort, swallow hard to equalize the pressure on either side of the eardrum. Thank you for watching the videos. I hope that you have learned something new today that you can apply in your daily life. Goodbye and God bless Batang IS!